In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is in our midst, he is and ever shall be. Uh, good afternoon, St. Constantine and Helen parishioners. Uh, yesterday's sermon, uh, which I broadcast via YouTube, was well received by all of you, and so in talking to a number of people yesterday and the day before, and praying and thinking and reflecting on what is happening around us, I thought it, I would offer another few words today, and, and may they be uh, for our benefit. And actually, the, the first things, two things, I want to say are, are not really words of counsel, but rather two suggestions that I want to make to our parish, and for that matter, to anyone listening to the video. The first thing I want to say is, is I want to suggest that tonight we all do something as a group. Today is Monday, March 16th, and tonight at 8.30 p.m., exactly 8.30 p.m. Central Time, as many of you as are able, I want us all to read the Akathist hymn to the Mother of God together. Not together physically, but together at the same time. We, of course, won't be able to do this physically together. Everyone will do it wherever they are, in their homes, at their work. But God is everywhere present and filling all things, so even if we are separated by physical space, we are all united in, in God, ultimately. Again, that's tonight at 8.30 p.m. Tell your friends, tell your spouses, tell your family. As many as are able, let us all together join in prayer, if not physically, together at least in one voice, so to speak, to offer the Akathist to the Mother of God. Uh, I would ask you, in fact, to pause the video right now and set an alarm on your phone so you can do this. And if you don't have this prayer in your prayer book, some of you may not, it is available online, and I put the website that connects to it on the comment section below in my video, so you can look there and find it. That is suggestion number one. Suggestion number two is that you and your family drink holy water every day during this period of time. A few days ago, I received an email from a friend of mine, and in that email there was a quote from St. Luke the Surgeon, sort of a newly revealed uh, uh, saint from the Ukraine. And if you want to know more about him, I put his life in the comment section below in this video. And in the quote, he is quoted as saying the following, quote, I am a bishop and a doctor. Now I am speaking to you like a doctor. The best medication for both physical and spiritual viruses is to drink holy water. So I, su I suggest and encourage all of you to do that. And if you don't have any holy water at home, I have put many bottles of it on the table outside in our church, sort of in the exo foyer, uh, as you come into the church from the parking lot. And, and I should say this is the outside room, so it's not locked. You can get to it anytime, even if the office is closed. So you can come by and pick up a bottle and you can take it home with you. Also note that you can always replenish holy water by simply adding more water. So you don't need a fresh bottle. If you have a drop of holy water in a bottle at your home, you can simply refill it to the brim and it all becomes holy water. So be aware of that. Those are my two suggestions. Now my reflection. As we look around, and we see all of the worry and even seemingly on the brink of panic that seems to be infecting all of us, I want to remind you all that God is in control. I know I've said that before, but I want to say it again. Should we prepare for some rough weeks ahead? I think, I think we should. I think God would want us to do that. I myself have seven mouths to feed, a wife, myself, and five children, and I'm a little worried about what lies ahead. But I say all of this because last night I was talking with my wife about what's going on around us, and I sort of rhetorically asked her a question. The question was, if a neighbor or a friend knocked on our door and they had run out of food, and there wasn't any food to be had, but we had some extra food, would I give that food to them at the expense of my kids perhaps not having that food? And I said to my wife, it's easy to say you would do it when there's nothing at stake, right? When it's only a thought experiment. But it's something altogether different to do it in reality. Which brought to mind, for me, a story from the Old Testament, which I want to share with you. 
uh, which addresses two important points. First, the need to trust that God is the ultimate provider. And secondly, that we Christians are called to live our lives believing that, believing that God can do even with us what he is about to do in the story I'm about to share. And here is the story. If you want to read it at home, you can. It's from 1 Kings chapter 17, and it reads as follows. Now, Elijah, the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the Wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. But after a while the Wadi dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. First, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. What am I saying here? I am saying that we can trust God even through this crisis, that God is infinitely bigger than this crisis, that the God we believe in was the all-governing God of the universe before this crisis, He is God of the universe during this crisis, and He will continue to be the all-loving, all-powerful God of the universe after this crisis. That God loves us, and that just like a good father, nothing brings God greater joy than seeing to it that His children are taken care of. Also, we need to take care of ourselves, of course, and we also need to remember that we are, in fact, our brother's keepers. As Christians, we need to be sure that the people around us, our neighbors, our co-workers, our fellow parishioners, are okay. I want to ask all of you to look out for each other, to make a phone call, to check in, to make sure everyone is okay. And if someone isn't, to let me know so I can reach out to them as well. And of course, if there's anything I can do, please do not hesitate for a second to reach out to me. That is why I am here. I am the father of this parish, and that is my job. I want you all to know that I am praying for you and your families, and by God's grace, we will get through this. We will be okay. I hope tonight, brothers and sisters, you will be a part of our Akathist reading effort at 8.30 p.m., and be well. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you and your family and all of your loved ones. Amen.